Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing you the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. Hey, Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the country. And today we're gonna venture into the eye of the storm. We're talking about the fastest growing community in the state since 2010. That's right, we're talking about Whitestown, Indiana. Follow me now and let's see what all the hype is about. Now, Whitestown was founded in 1851, but in 163 years, it had only grown to a population of 3,000 people. But then explosion, and Whitestown now tops 12,000. That's 4X growth in just 10 years. Whitestown sits alongside I-65, the interstate which connects Chicago to Indianapolis to Nashville, Tennessee. Whitestown is 20 to 30 minutes north of downtown Indianapolis or the airport, and it's just seven miles north of the northern tier of Indianapolis's neighborhoods and commercial developments. It's five minutes over to ritzy Zionsville. It's just five minutes south of Lebanon where Fortune number 127 company, Eli Lilly, the pharmaceutical giant, is investing $9 billion in a 600 acre business park, creating thousands of high paying jobs. And speaking of jobs, there's 7,662 people in the labor force in Whitestown. 59% of them are college grads. Most of the jobs are outside Whitestown, but the commute on average is only 24 minutes. And those are to high paying jobs. The median household income, get this, is $118,000. That is much higher than state and national averages. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Because of all that, there are lots of new subdivisions being built and lots of new commercial development. The Anson development on the south side of town is a good example. It's a multi-use uh, situation with commercial, residential, and parks being developed. The city fathers have also brought in the Little League Regional Headquarters. And in addition to the headquarter building, they've built a full-fledged stadium. And that now plays host to regional Little League and softball tournaments. Hey, there's no doubt, Whitestown's trying to make itself out to be the next Fishers. All the while holding on to its small town charm and its agricultural roots. They've got a farmer's market and community events and summer concert in the park series. They're busy expanding the 13 mile rail trail. And while you're out walking or biking or jogging or whatever you do on the trail, be sure to stop in at the Moontown Brewery for a pint and a little live music. Hey, about the only con I can come up with about Whitestown is there's kind of a lack of community in the sense that there's not a lot of tradition. I mean, there were only 3,000 people here 14 years ago. So there's no old school downtown. And the kids go to two different school systems, Lebanon and Zionsville. Now they're both good school systems. Lebanon is a top 20% school. And heck, Zionsville is the number three ranked school in the state. But in my humble opinion, if they had just one high school and it was Whitestown High School, there would be more of a sense of community. Hey, and if things keep growing the way they are, that's probably gonna happen sooner rather than later. 77% of the people own their own home. There are 478 single family residents sold in the past 12 months. And the median price on those was $359,000. So let's take a look at what you get for that in today's housing market. Let's walk inside 7119 Stetson Drive. This is a new home by Lennar. Like many homes that are for sale in Whitestown, many of them are new. You just can't grow at this pace without them, all the new houses. This one's located in the Cardinal Point community. It's nestled within the lush greenery of the Golf Club of Indiana. And you even get a social membership with a purchase. Plus residents get to enjoy a community pool, playground and walking trails. This is a convenient single story design with an open concept featuring an island kitchen with stainless steel appliances. You get to enjoy uh, Lennar's everything's included package, plus there's a split floor plan for added privacy. The big garage offers up plenty of space for storage, and this one will be ready in just a few months. This home happens to be listed by Compass Realty, but FYI, I can help you with any house that's for sale in the state, whether it's listed by myself, another realtor, or hey, even a FISBO. This home on Stetson, it's got 1,673 square feet with three bedrooms and two full baths. 
and the ticket on this is $354,995. Now, if you'd like to see this or any other home, just give me a quick buzz or send me a text. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. The numbers are in for June, and in the 16-county Central Indiana marketplace surrounding the city of Indianapolis, the medium home prices are up 7% from a year ago and sitting at $320,000. Homes are selling in nine days as opposed to seven days a year ago. And they're selling at an average discount of 1% below the list price from a year ago. So hey, note to self, don't think you're gonna bid 10% off the list price and get the property. This ain't 2008. Now, sales are down 12% and that's pushing inventory up 21% to 4,262 homes for sale in central Indiana. But that's only a 1.6 month supply and a balanced market ought to have six months. So as that old song says, we've got a long way to go to get there. In Hamilton County, prices are essentially flat, sitting with a median average price of $453,000. They're selling on average in six days which is, hey, one day shorter than a year ago. They're also selling at a half a percent below asking price. So on a $453,000 home, what's that, uh, $22, $2,300? With sales slowing, inventory is growing, but there's still only 1.2 months supply. And again, that ought to be six months. On the street, this is what I'm seeing and hearing. Good houses in good locations, in good condition, are selling fast. And I might add, for top dollar. So wannabe sellers, get your home ready. This ain't 2021. And for buyers, come prepared. Get yourself pre-approved in advance. Not pre-qualified, pre-approved. If you don't know the difference and why, ask me. And have the lender make out the pre-approval letter for as much as you qualify for. There's two reasons why. Number one, if you see a house that you just really love and have to have, you'll be ready. Even if it's outside that budget that you had in mind and more than that letter, you'll be ready and you won't lose out. Because hey, you're not gonna have to be trying to find your lender at seven o'clock on a Saturday night. That's not a good strategy for success. Number two, many people don't want that letter to state $1 more than what the asking price on the house is. They don't want the seller to think that they have $1 more that they can afford to spend on that house. But guess what? Think about what you're telling the seller. You're telling them that you're at the top of your ability to purchase. And given the choice, they're gonna look at other offers and they're gonna find one where there's a big gap between what somebody can afford and what they're buying. That will make the very little risk of that loan not closing. So if you really wanna buy a certain house and not just practice writing offers, do these two things to increase your odds of being successful. Now, if I can be of service, hit me up in the comments below or call me directly. And hey, make it a great day now. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.